Watch you guys got another video here for you on how to use Macroom Reflect. Now Macroom Reflect has a free version which is available for cloning your hard drives or SSD or NVMe drives. Wherever you want to clone you can uh, use Macroom Reflect. Now there's a bunch of different options available here if you want to purchase a version of it which gives you more options and more features but we're going to be concentrating on the Reflect 8 free version which you can download here. It does give you access to uh, disk cloning, which is what we want to do. You'll need to register to get your uh, license key, your free license key here. Just put this in here and put your registration details in to get your license key sent to you. Once you've got all that information, you can then download the software and then install it onto your PC. You can see I'm installing the software here. It's pretty straightforward and easy to do. So we're going to go ahead and get this installed on the system. So you should see your key will be here and we can then put the tick in this software is being installed for personal or non-commercial use only. You can register here if you want to. I'm going to register a little bit later on and click next. So I'm going to install the desktop shortcut icon and then go next and install the software on the PC. Now an important bit of information to remember is the destination disk which you want to clone to has to be larger or the same size as the original source disk. Also, data on the destination disk will be overwritten. So I'm going to quickly do an update here because there's a patch and I'm going to update this software to the latest version. So I'm just going to click start here and it will go ahead and patch Macroom Reflect to the latest version. This will fix any sort of bugs or any sort of updates that Macroom Reflect have released. So it's important that you keep it updated. Click finish once that's done and then we can open the software and start the cloning process. Now, if you're upgrading from, say, a 250 gigabyte SSD to a one terabyte SSD, then cloning is a perfect way of cloning from a smaller drive to a larger drive, and everything will be exactly as it was on the small drive. You can see I've got two one terabyte drives here. Now, as long as the Kingston drive, which is going to be my destination drive, is the same size or larger than the source drive, which is going to be my C drive, which I'm going to clone to the Kingston drive, then we should be okay. Now, if the destination drive was smaller than the original source drive, then you won't be able to clone that data over. So let's open up the software here, and you can see it here. Now, the software is very easy to use, and there's plenty of other features built into this software, but we're going to concentrate on cloning the disk. I just want to go up the top here and show you here. These are the local disks, and then we've got definition files, scripts, and then schedule uh, backups here. So we're going to go onto local disks, and then we're going to go down to where it says clone this disk. Let's go ahead and click on clone this disk, and this will open up the clone this disk feature. So you can see inside here we have our source disk. This is the disk that we're going to be copying or cloning. So we can see We've got a tick mark in these boxes here. And this means that we're going to be copying all of the drive completely. Now, I don't want to be copying uh, Kingston drive because that is going to be my destination drive. So you can select a, another source drive if you want to. If I open up this PC, you can see the Kingston disk is disk D. So I don't want to be copying or cloning that drive. I want to send that to my destination area. So let me go ahead and click on the select a different source because it's automatically selected uh, drive D for our source disk, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and change this. So just click up the top here on the top right hand side. You can see it listed here, your drive, and we can select our disk that we want to clone. So I'm going to select the bottom one here, which is going to be my C drive in this case. So let me select this. Now you can see it's now selected the correct drive that we want to clone. There is no ticks in here, uh, so we need to put tick marks in here so we can clone this particular uh, disk. So let's go ahead and click on this tick box here to check mark all of the partitions that we want to clone over. So I'm going to go ahead, and this is our local disk for our source. Now let's click on select the disk to clone to. This is going to be our destination uh, disk that we're going to clone to. So you can see here, if you select a different disk, your current operation will be discarded. Do you want to continue? I'm going to say yes. So 
So I'm going to now click on this one here. And this is going to be our Kingston Drive here. So this is our Kingston Drive. Now this will be erased, so you have to be careful. All of this drive will be completely erased and written over. So if you've got any data on the drive for your destination disk, then I'd advise you to back that up before you continue. So now we've got this out of the way, you've got the options to erase disk like this if you want to and erase it all, or you can delete partitions. You've also got uh, copy partitions as well. If you want to copy partitions, you'd need to make sure that you've got enough space on that destination drive if you wanted to copy those over as well. Uh, but we're just going to clone the whole drive over and use this drive as our main drive. So also in the advanced options area, we have clone options, which means you can perform an intelligent uh, sector copy. And you can also perform a forensic sector copy as well. Depending on which one you want to go for, you just put the radio button in like this. But we're going to leave this as, as it is here. But if you did want to change, you can basically just put the radio button in the uh, bottom one here, just like so. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and use the other version of uh, cloning. But this version would be obviously sector by sector, which will take a lot longer to do. So we're going to do this one here. You also got shutdown here. You can enable power saving mode on Windows. And you also got email notification once the cloning is done, if it's a quite a long uh, cloning process. So I'm going to reselect the uh, target disk here, which is my Kingston disk. So like this, because I don't want to erase it, but you can delete the partitions as well and also copy partitions over. But we don't have enough copy in space for that uh, process. So we're going to leave that as is. But we need to make sure we put the tick in the top one here. And then we're ready to click on the next button down the bottom here. We're not going to be using any of these features here. So let's go ahead and click on the next button down the bottom to continue our cloning process. This will take us to a schedule this clone. So if you want to add a schedule, you can do and click on the add schedule here. And this will allow you to add a schedule so you can back up uh, schedule settings here. You've got monthly, everyday, weekly and so on. Um, so whatever you want to set this up as if you want to do this, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to, but you've got all your days, times and everything else. So you can set all this up. It's pretty self-explanatory, really. I'm not going to go through this in here, but if you did set it up, it will be something like this. And this will then be set for that time. If you want to edit it, you can do and go back and edit it. Or if you want to uh, delete it, you can just click on the delete and it will remove that schedule there. So let's go ahead and click next. And we should now see our summary here, which is what we're going to be doing with this clone. It tells you exactly what your source disk is and what your uh, destination disk is and what it's going to actually clone. So it gives you all that information here. So take time to read it and make sure that you're doing it correctly. Otherwise, you could end up erasing disks that you don't want to erase or clone to a disk that you don't want to clone to if you have more than two disks on your system. Once you're happy with this, we can click finish. And this will then continue with our cloning process. So it's now going to say uh, backup, save options, run the backup now. And save backup as a schedule on the XML backup definition file. So we can do that if we wish, and it will go into that location. It's going to warn us that the uh, destination, which is our Kingston drive, is going to be overwritten and erased. So if there is any data on there, this is a last chance for you to get that data off. I'm going to put the tick mark in here and then we're going to click continue and this will then continue the cloning process. So let's go ahead and click on this and you should see now that the process will start. It's going to start to copy all this information. There's not a lot of information on this drive and these are very fast drives. These are NVMe uh, Gen 4 drives. So the cloning process should be very, very quick indeed. Now, if you're using uh, slower hardware like mechanical drives or you may be using an SSD or something like that, and you've got an old system, or maybe you've got a super fast system, this will all determine how fast this cloning process is going to be. Everyone is going to have faster times and slower times depending on the hardware that they're using. So let's go ahead and click continue. I've speeded this process up a little bit, and you can see this was very, very quick, and it's actually cloned this over very fast indeed. So I'm going to click OK here, and that cloning process is now done. So what should have happened if it's gone successfully? is that we've cloned our ADATA Gen 4 drive over to our Kingston um, drive, which is a Gen 4 drive as well. So we've done a complete clone of one drive to another drive. 
So we can theoretically boot to this drive now because it should should be an absolute identical drive to what we've got as our original C drive. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, boot the system up and change over to our Kingston drive and hopefully boot to that drive so you can see it working. Now, if I wanted to move this to another computer, I could do, and I would have an absolute replica of what we've got on this computer. So I'm going to go ahead and boot to our BIOS, and I'm going to change the boot option one to my Kingston drive, and I'm going to disable uh, the original drive, which was in there, which is an A-Data drive, just so you can see it boot to it, and it should have no problems at all. So I'm going to go down to here and select this one here, and we can go here and disable that drive there. And what we can do now is make sure that our boot option one is our Kingston drive. As you can see here, it is our Kingston drive. Once we've got those selections done, we can push F10 and boot to our computer. So I've saved those settings and we've now booted up to our Kingston drive here. So I've disabled the A data drive, which had our Windows operating system on it. And as you can see, we've cloned it over to this drive, which is our Kingston drive. So this is got all the information from our previous drive, which is our A data drive, which is a Gen 4 drive. If I open up this uh, software here, you'll be able to see that this is actually our uh, Kingston drive here, which we've booted to. And this is the one we've just cloned to. So that's basically how you can clone your drive, whether it will be a mechanical drive, an SSD or NVMe. As long as your destination uh, drive, which you're cloning to, is the same size or larger, than your source drive. So that is basically how you can clone one drive to another. And there is some other options available in cloning. You can remove certain partitions and only cl clone certain stuff. But I've cloned exactly the whole drive over to another drive so we can use that. And if you was upgrading from, say, for instance, a smaller drive, maybe you've got a 250 gig uh, NVMe drive or SSD and you want to uh, upgrade to a one terabyte SSD or NVMe and you can do you can clone your 250 gig uh, drive over to a one terabyte drive very simply and easily like that it's very simple and easy to do and it's used using free software from Macroom Reflect I'll leave all the links and information in the video description my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk hope you found this video useful if you did then give it a thumbs up and I shall see you again for another video real soon just want to say a big shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. Your names are rolling up on the screen right now. And I shall see you again real soon. Bye for now.